Hey there, you're listening to Making Spaces, the podcast about community, culture, and making new connections, hosted by my good Judy, my friend and yours, Sarah Heath. On this podcast, we're having conversations about design, literally making spaces, and how some of the most inclusive spaces aren't always the most inviting. And we're talking about what it means to make space for one another. With the world the way it is right now, we need to find ways to have conversations across lines of radical difference. So join Sarah each week as she tackles the intersection of design and practical spirituality with conversations with some of the most fabulous guests you're ever going to meet. Some will talk about actual design, some of us will talk about relational design, but no matter what, it's an incredible time. So grab yourself a cup of whatever you like, and welcome to Making Spaces with Sarah Heath. We put restrictions or boundaries on who we think would be appropriate to reach out to, or we're too small, or, and until you make the ask, like you never know what somebody's gonna say, or who they know, or, it's just been like a really eye-opening experience. Like when you talk about, I want to market this by collaborating with other female entrepreneurs. And I don't know if they're gonna say yes to me or not to become like affiliates of the product to help get it out there, but like I sure as hell wanna try. I don't know about you, but I think we all have those friends who make us believe what we once thought out of our reach or impossible is completely within our reach and completely possible. Dana Backich is one of those people for me, and maybe it's because I've watched the musical Hamilton every day since it came out, but I think the world needs more people like Dana, people who see the unimaginable and are willing to figure out how to create it. Dana is the founder of Positive Equation, a digital consultant firm for nonprofits, and as if that wasn't enough, I asked Dana to come on this show because of her second business and passion, Her Desk. Her Desk is a sustainable and functional desk made by and for female entrepreneurs. It has been incredible to watch Dana dream and execute on that dream in a way that brings people into the story with partnership and a real desire to amplify the work of others. We recorded this a couple of months ago and I've been sitting on it, hoping to pair it with a very exciting conversation. And that's still happening, but I couldn't wait on this any longer. I've been watching her desk launch and I cannot wait to share it with you. So I hope you enjoy this conversation and stick around at the end for the weekly takeaway and an inspiring quote. I would like to start how I always like to start. The question is this, if you could say like one place is like your favorite place. And I know that favorite is a word that people struggle with, so it doesn't have to be your favorite place, but what is a place that you love and then why do you love it? And it can be like internationally, it can be somewhere in your home. It can be anywhere, just a place. When you think of a place that you love, what do you think of? Great question. Um, honestly, and this is kind of, I guess, like outside the box. Um, I really love new spaces. Oh. So being somewhere I've never been before um, and exploring. I think um, Daniel, my fiance and I, when we traveled to Europe, I am so curious about history and like the concept of who might've been standing mm. right here. Yeah. Like, so many years ago and what were they doing and what was this building like and who was there? And, um, so I don't know, I guess that's one. So I think I just like feel so inspired when I'm in a place I don't know a lot about. And then the second thing that really comes to mind is I love to ski. Uh, same. And yeah, I love being on top of a slope, like Literally, as you're about to like, you know, you turn the skis and you go down. Mm -hmm. And when there's like no one there. Oh, yeah. And uh -huh. it's just like open and you're free and the momentum gets going and it's just like a rush. I feel like those are such polar opposite. <laughs> They're not, though. I mean, I think about uh, knowing you, you're someone who likes both like you kind of like the thrill of the unknown. And the truth about skiing is even though you like no run is the same, right? Yeah. Um, every run exactly. is different and you never know until you come over the crest of about to start. Um, I, th my friends call it a perma smile whenever I'm skiing. Cause I just get the biggest <laughs> smile on my face and I don't stop smiling for the entire day. Um, because I yes. just, I love being on the slopes. I love being around. 
I like being kind of cold, but also hot from the, you know, doing it sweating or whatever. Um, and I, you know, I grew up skiing. So there's like this weird sort of, uh, everybody's in such a great mood. Yeah. Like they're just, it's kind of like the same thing as surfing, right? Yes, that's true. (laughs) You know what? Surfing for me is probably how a lot of people feel skiing. I love the ocean and I was like, when I was a kid, I scuba dived when I was like, I started scuba diving at 12. And so I love the ocean. I love surfing. I, I love the idea of surfing, but the truth is I'm not great at it because I didn't grow up surfing, but I grew up skiing. So I know like I've taken friends skiing and they are not in a good mood because it's something that they, it's so foreign and it's a different way yeah. of using your body. Whereas they get really frustrated, right? It's like every time I've gone uh, surfing in the last couple of years, like I just get destroyed by the waves. I upright paddleboard a lot because it's like, okay, I don't have to worry about paddling out. Um, but there is just a sense of like, I can see the frustration for a lot of people when they're learning things. So it kind of depends on yes. your personality, which I think both of the spaces you recommend are uh, rec- recommended. Well mentioned are places that, you know, require sort of a, I would say kind of an entrepreneurial spirit or a spirit of like, huh, curiosity. I wonder what this is going to hold. I wonder what this is about. And I think that says a lot about who you are. So I'm glad I asked you the question. So you, <laughs> thank you. So my, funny. <laughs> yeah. It's, isn't it funny? You would not, it's like actually a lot of people have been telling me that they've started using that question now when they are meeting people. Um, there's also my other friend who asked the question of if you killed somebody, where would you hide the body just to find out, um, what kind of person they're dealing with. So, you know, <laughs> depending on how you want to get to know people, that's a great question so on a first date. Good. Do you, yeah. Where would you hide a body or what's your favorite space? So either like if you're like hoping for a second, maybe you throw in one if you're hoping to end the date as soon as possible. Maybe ask them where they yeah, hide a body. Yeah, right. That's so funny. I love it. because Yeah, because it opens it up for, I guess you can think about what does that mean about that person. Mm-hmm. And their interpretation because people hear mm-hmm. things differently. So Dana, you started out in the corporate world. Um, and I've been talking to a lot of entrepreneurial women this month, which has been really fun because you and I actually met through a group, uh, the Yellow Collective, and I had Joanna, the creator of that, on, um, which is a group for women who are entrepreneurial. But you were in the corporate world doing social media and marketing kind of stuff. And from what I uh, remember of your story, you really just sort of had this sense of like, I want I want it to mean more. And so you created your own company that does um, social media marketing strategy stuff for people who are working either uh, in not for profit or if they're working for, I guess, sort of the betterment or I don't, what do we call these companies? Purpose do, driven. Purpose driven. All right. Um, <laughs> purpose driven, which is in my in my world, the church world, there's a guy who kind of branded purpose driven. So I'm always hesitant to say it. Um, but yes, there is this sense of like, what are you doing for good? And then out of that, your latest venture is one that I want to talk about. It's her desk, which is a desk designed for women. Can you give, tell a little bit about it? Because I think it's incredible. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like it's been such an amazing adventure and journey through all of this. I mean, to back up slightly, cause it feels like it's almost kind of like repeating itself with her desk is, mm. so I used to live in New York city and, uh, literally I launched positive equation my first business three years ago to the week. Mm. And I remember pacing outside of my New York office. We had an office on 28th and fifth Avenue. So literally like as Manhattan as it gets and (laughs) pacing and being like, what am I doing? Thinking about like quitting my corporate job Mm. and starting a business with really like no idea what I was doing. Um, I didn't have any clients. I didn't really know my rent was up. I didn't know if I was going to stay in New York or if that was smart, like financially trying to start a business. And so, I mean, three years later now, it's been great and I wouldn't have changed anything for the world. And then with her desk, I guess it was like six months ago. I It's had... only been six months and you're already like <laughs> starting prototypes and sales. This woman. Okay, go ahead. Six months ago. Six months ago, I had, well, so my, <laughs> there's like so many little mini stories within all of this. No problem. Um, when I moved to Los Angeles, I was running Positive Equation and then 
just due to the entertainment industry as it is out here so prominent through people you meet i ended up getting the opportunity to be a producer on american idol and so for there's a part i forgot yeah that's true yeah. uh-huh <laughs> so for nine months as i was they were hiring me through positive equation so when i worked for idol i was in an office and or on set or traveling whatever it was so i was kind of removed from working from home so much Mm -hmm. so that when the season ended and I decided I didn't want to go back for the following season and I wanted to focus on my business, I was back working from home all the time. And I had this like really crappy Ikea desk and it was small, it was flimsy, no space. It had no functionality. And so I just super simple. I needed a new desk. So I like started as one does Google searching for desks that I don't know, had certain features I thought would be common. And I mean, you know, I love to support other female owned businesses. So I was like, Ooh, is there anything that's like female owned furniture, female owned desk company, female, whatever, like desk owned by woman, like (laughs) as as many like (laughs) keywords as you can imagine. And then I was like, sustainable desk, conscious consumer desk, like all the Google terms. I just wanted a desk that was made by a woman or like company led by a woman and was made sustainably from like ethical materials and nothing came up. It was so odd actually. And it was like the typical places, Wayfair and Target or Office Depot or these like huge companies or the complete opposite, very, very, very high end, like yeah, expensive handmade twenty five hundred dollar custom desks, and I'm like, well, I ain't paying twenty five hundred dollars. <laughs> I just had a conversation with someone who I'm helping with their um, re uh, decorating of their sanctuary, actually, like, almost an entire repurpose, and they're like, yeah, we're looking to spend about um, seven thousand on a new altar table, and this is when I was <gasps> like. I need to just start building, like, not just like yes. I, re- I refinish furniture all the time, but I'm like 7,000, I could, I could build a team over 7,000. I know when you start looking at, and it's, you know, it's the craftsmanship, it's the talent, it's all that that you're paying for. But yeah, finding a, a desk could, you're either, you know, getting one that a lot of folks have, or for me, I put mine together. But um, for a lot of people, you know, you go to Ikea and Ikea has great desks if that's what you're looking for, but you were kind of looking for something sustainable and that was going to, cause you knew you were going to be home a lot. Yeah. And I just like, I ended up finding, I bought something on, um, I think it was Wayfair and it was $450. So it -hmm. wasn't like cheap Nope. and I got it in the mail and it was particle board. Oof. It was flimsy. It part of it had already chipped off when I got it. And the first thing that happened, I literally opened, I took photos of it because I was so frustrated. I opened the box and it was 14 pieces and you put it together with those cheap cylinder. What are those things called? Yeah. They're dowels. Dowels. Thank you. And it was awful. And I was like, uh, my sense was ugh. Right. And Mm -hmm. like, that's not what you want in most unboxing quote unquote situations. Right. Like, like, Ooh, let me take a photo of this. This is so beautifully packaged. No. (laughs) Well, right. It's the idea of the, this space that you were creating was for your own business. Right. So you wanted it to, to sort of be a positive experience, even in that, because you know, you're going to be spending so much time at your desk. Yeah, exactly. And so, I mean, it just didn't, it didn't do what I wanted it to do. And so I wanted, (laughs) I wanted a desk and this just speaks kind of like the features where I have post-it notes all over in front of me right now. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted like a whiteboard kind of space to like scribble on and doodle and write to-do lists, whatever my cords, I have two monitors. I wanted my cords to be hidden. Yeah. So I wanted that. I always have my phone. So wireless charging nowadays seems like a no brainer. I always have, I have water sitting in front of me. I always have coffee or water or something or a glass of wine if it's happy hour. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, we have that later today, don't we? There you go. Or, or a candle, right. Can fit in like a cup spot. Mm -hmm. So I wanted that. Um, I knew I wanted drawer space, which is ironically not super common in a lot of desks. A lot of desks are just flat. Yeah. And 
and I wanted, I always have a purse or a backpack or something and right. it's always on the floor. Right. So I wanted some way to hook it in some way. So those were literally my main features that like got me started on, and I don't know, I guess it's the entrepreneur in me where obviously I've been running a service-based business for three years and I know literally nothing about manufacturing and fabrication and woodworking and any of that kind of stuff. But I was like, well, if I want this, would somebody else maybe want this? <laughs> I love this. And, and you're such a researcher. It. So you started looking and talking. Yeah, I started looking and I put out a uh, type form survey to like 50 friends. As one and does. Got feedback. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then I luckily had a friend from college who was a interior designer, and she's like, "Yeah, I'll do CAD drawings for you." And then this just shows you like the time frame at things at Friendsgiving in November. Um, it, <laughs> as you like go down the food line, you're like, "Oh, hi, how are you? Like, what do you do? Like, to people you don't know." And literally, this one guy was like, "I design furniture." Nice. And I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> You do what? (laughs) And like three weeks ago, he delivered my prototype desk. And And it's got these features that like you've got a hook for your purse. The top of it you can like write on because it's a whiteboard. Yep. There's a little uh, area for your coffee or whatever it might be. It has all the things you dream of. But the other thing is you talk to a group. I I was lucky enough to be part. Talk to a group of people and say like, what would you want as a woman who runs your own thing what would you want because i think people forget like we're smaller our desks in general not always um a lot of desks are made for either they're made for nothing they're just a table that they're i don't know what they're thinking um or it's made you know the entrepreneurial desk is for a guy or whatever it might be or just the idea that you were kind of trying to make it fit to the people that you knew it was a very Specific. I was trying to make it useful. Yeah. You know? And also, like, have you... The other component of it is... I don't know about you. I sit at my desk for so long mm-hmm. every day. Yeah. And you, with her desk, I want people to be able to customize the colors of the desk. They can customize the hardware that goes on the drawers. Like, it should be a space and a piece of furniture that makes you happy and either whether you want it to be calm or inspired, like it's a desk is the place that you create. Yeah. So like, how can you feel so like happy and inspired and ready to like take on whatever the day brings to you by like surrounding yourself with something that's going to like lift you up to do that. Right. And you're, this is how you bring your, your thing into the world. Um, and, and I loved your idea too, of having the desk, um, sort of be influenced by women who are, influential in some way, shape or form. Um, because I think there is as women, we've talked about this a couple of times, uh, as women, sometimes we're not taught how to, um, get excited about other people's successes because there's Mm -hmm. this um, feeling of almost scarcity in the world. Like if you do well, then I can't do well. Instead of this idea of, um, apprenticeship or, or lifting up or even being able to magnify each other's voices or, you know, how do we, you know, make it bigger, make, help each other, just all this sort of things. And so the idea that, uh, even from the design, you were thinking of a particular women. And I think that's just an incredible piece of the story too. As you oh yeah. At. And a funny, like a funny sidebar to that is, so here in Los Angeles, there's a, um, company called squeeze and they were like co-founded or like helped started by Drybar, the founders of Drybar. So the CMO of Drybar left to start Squeeze and Ali Webb, Ali Webb helped support Squeeze. So the CEO of Squeeze and I worked out at the same studio, like gym studio. And I became friends with her and I started to just explain what I was working on <laughs> months ago. And Fast forward, she like DM'd me recently because she moved and was like, hey, I really need a desk. What's going on with her desk? And and then um, I was like, actually, I'd love to pick your brain on the kind of like the development of what's happening. Do you mind if I call you? And she's like, yeah, for sure. That's so cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. She's so just she's like, like yeah. 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 Let's jump on a call. Of And so then, crazy or not, she's like, I don't know. I was asking her some, like, manufacturing questions because she's de- she developed all the products for Drybar. And she's like, it's a little bit different with furniture. She's like, but you know what? You know who might be a good connection for you is our head contractor at Drybar. Okay. <laughs> I was like, the guy who builds out like every single franchise and I was like that would be cool sure nice <laughs> like, I think it's just we have we put restrictions or boundaries on who we think would be appropriate to reach out to or we're too small or and until you make the ask like you never know what somebody's gonna say or who they know or it's just been like a really eye-opening experience. Like when you talk about, I want to market this by collaborating with other female entrepreneurs. And I don't know if they're going to say yes to me or not to become like affiliates of the product to help get it out there. But like, I sure as hell want to try. <laughs> I love it. I think it's the idea of making space for more people and whether it's, you know, um, more uh, women or more folks who work with just sustainable products or whatever it it is, as you're even like creating this thing for people to create more things, you're also creating space for people to participate in it and to become part of the story. I mean, I think it's always this idea of how are we making more and more space for more people? Um, Yeah. And literally you're doing that as you're building these desks, you're making space for people to be able to, continue making you know we're going to take a brief break from this conversation to listen my desk um back in the day the world marketplace used to have these uh universal tops for desks and then they had all these different pieces that you would like literally like they fit in well i being me measured and figured out you could put a filing cabinet on one side and it would be the exact same height as these uh, open uh, shelves on the other side. So I end up like Frankensteining my desk together by going to Goodwill because I'm the same as you. I'm like, I can't, you know, it, I, I want things to be, you know, either helpful towards the environment or, you know, that sort of thing. And so I um, found this old filing cabinet, but it was the wrong color, didn't match the other one. So my my old roommate was dying laughing as I'm outside, you know, painting this old filing cabinet because it's got to look the same amount of old as the fake old uh, open, you know, ca- like things. But I, when I sit here at this desk that I like, I pick the top out and, you know, it was a yeah. more money than I maybe would have normally spent on one piece of wood, but I just love it. This This thing has actually become you know, almost like a family member, this, this desk, this place that I sit, um, it is a, it is helping me be creative. And I think as, as people sit at the desks you're creating, it's going to only because it's them and then an extension of themselves and their work that they're doing. And that all the, like all the efforts that you've taken to be intentional, it's going to have other people being intentional about their own work. I think it's great. I hope so. I hope it like inspires, like this becomes a piece that, like you, it's more than just, um, you have to think about it. You know, it's also, I was talking to a designer in San Francisco about, I want it to be affordable, but then I also, it needs to stand outside of the fast furniture industry. Mm -hmm. And so I hope it becomes like a staple piece where it moves with you. Right. Or, um, or you change out, you can change out the hardware if you need to, right. As it grows in shapes. And I hope that I get to, evolve different desks as this company grows. And I was talking with somebody and like, Ooh, what if you created a desk for podcasters and it came with certain oh, features? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's a need <laughs> because it's so hard. I have to have my microphone out or like, I would love to have a, like a swing bar um, arm. Now that I'm saying this, yeah. I should just build it, but like a swing thing arm, so I can just put my mic up, but then I can put it away. Um, that would be great. Um, yeah, it's like, what if they're like, what about a beauty influencer? Maybe her desk comes with a mirror built in and lighting and, or what about somebody who maybe does, I don't know. It's just like thinking through different use cases of maybe like add-ons that could help make that person's workspace just so much more like 
useful and helpful and they are space. customized. Yeah, their space. So when That's you think it. about the work that you've done in, I love talking to you even about your positive equation, social market media, all the stuff that you're doing, you really are making spaces and places for people who um, that space is so foreign to them. So I'm thinking about, because uh, I just think every church should work with you. Um, every one who's trying to uh, figure out how to spread the message, but we get so caught up in in doing the other things. And I, I think it's sort of related in that you're creating a desk for people to then do the business. And online, you're like teaching people how to market their stuff so then they can do the actual business. But it has their touch to it. It has their look to it. It has their customization to it. Do you think those things are related in you? It always seems like you're trying to amplify other people's work. Does that seem true? That's so interesting. I feel like I'm in kind of like a therapy session with you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I overthink. I think through things. No. I, I look at how things connect and it just seems to me like all of your work is connected. I love it because you know, when you're, when you're so in something, you don't, and I, I literally say this to my clients, when you're so in something, you can't see everything from a 30,000 foot view and all the other things that are surrounding you and what it really looks like as a full picture. Mm. And that's really interesting that you say that. Um, and it, I feel like it makes so much more sense. Yeah. I mean, totally the, I changed positive equation when I first started was very traditional agency because that's what I knew from working in New York was it was a traditional agency model. And then I realized I'm not doing anybody any service and it's not sustainable if I'm the one doing all the work for these, I don't know, six month retainer, year retainer. And then the retainer is over and it goes back to the person in house. And then it, it goes back to what it was. It's way more beneficial if I am like a coach and helping them through like, let's create a strategy together and let's do a couple of weeks or months together. And then you take it over and then that person's smarter. Hopefully they can get a raise. Their work is better. They're seeing more results. I had this amazing, it's been such a full circle. I worked with, uh, this nonprofit called unseen. Mm -hmm. They work with partners all over the world to try and put an end to human trafficking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, they hired me right as I had started my company, but they couldn't afford kind of my agency rates. And so I was like, well, why don't we just do like consulting coaching before I had even really thought about this. And so we did. And now three years forward, their Facebook channel had maybe 2,500 to like 3000 followers. And then now they have 19,000. Whoa. And they've seen like, consistent growth and like everything's changed so much digitally for them um, because they've put in these like simple practices to do it like organically. And one of the biggest things I told them was to do live content strategy. And so last week, the CEO or the girl who I had worked with asked, will you come on a Facebook live interview with our CEO? And I was like, I love that you're asking me this. <laughs> I told you to do it. Now you're bringing me on. Yeah, I thought it was so cool. So yeah, I mean, to bring it back to your question or your point, I think, yeah, if I can help provide things that, I don't know, allow people to either do their job better or grow their business or spread their mission and message. Like I've always said with Positive Equation that I believe that storytelling plus social media equals social change. Yeah. And I just feel like that's so true. And I guess if I can be kind of a, a light to do that or a, I don't know the right word for it, but somebody can just kind of like help, um, encourage people to yeah. learn and grow and do that. Yeah. I think that's the, even as you're talking about wanting a desk that is within people's reach, but isn't one that, um, you know, before we jumped into me thinking all of your things are connected, we we're talking about how the. <laughs> You know, the cost of a, a desk, if it's super cheap, then it's probably part of a huge mass, you know, that you're just going to throw away, that you're not going to move mm -hmm. with you from, you know, your hope is that you help people's businesses grow or you help their things grow or maybe they're moving offices or 
maybe all of us are working at home from now on. Um, but but that it's yeah. something that they would take with them or have with them or even maybe, you know, I think about passing things down, right? We don't think about that anymore. But some of my furniture are passed down from family members. And we've kind of lost that that thing. We've lost that ability to do that. But if you can open that um, up for more people, people who, yeah, it's, it might be a stretch to buy this first desk, but it's going to be something that they want to hold on to and keep because it wasn't just that like hundred dollar desk that is falling apart. If right. it's within their, right. you know, if it's within their budget or whatever it might be, um, it becomes more of a sentimental piece mm-hmm. and something that you're, you're going to want to keep. Cause I think that's the, the thing about the throwaway society that's so hard for me and why when I go in and I'm looking at church spaces or even looking at community spaces or even helping some friends with homes and I'm looking at those kind of spaces, I I don't think people are throwaway and I also don't think mm. like items are throwaway unless, you know, I'm all I'm an anti clutter person. So I think it's better to have more pieces that hold meaning for you. Like what what does this desk say about what I'm hoping will be true for my business. What does this desk say for what I'm hoping to be or to bring into the world? Um, I love that you yeah. thought through all of that. Thank you. Yeah. And you're partnering with people <laughs> too. Like the, um, I just saw that you've got different sort of, uh, what are they called? Findings. You know, what is the word I'm looking for? Hardware. Attach- hardware. Thank you. Uh, different, <laughs> different hardware that is so incredible and, And, you know, they're able to decide what they're like gemstone colors or like. And like, it's been so fun. Like the hardware, one company, Addison Weeks, it's owned by two women um, and they curate all their pieces. Another one was literally from a woman's Etsy shop. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing I'm looking at is called Bagnet, which is literally um, that would be used for the hook functionality, which Mm -hmm. is. A, it's a magnet that holds bags (laughs) and they're like all customized and beautifully designed. And so like, I'm jumping on the phone with the CEO. I'm trying to partner. Um, I mean, with the work I do with positive equation, I wanted her desk to have some sort of give back component too. So I reached out to girls garage, which is based out of Berkeley, California. And they literally host, um, they have a shop where they do programming for girls and like teenagers to learn about woodworking and building. Oh my gosh. I want to go there. (laughs) You, oh my gosh, you would love it. And I found out about them because, um, Melinda Gates went and visited them. Wow. And so, yeah, it was really cool. I saw like a post on Instagram or something. And so I, again, like just contacted their, info at girls garage (laughs) and the development director wrote me back and was like oh my gosh I love this concept like let me talk to our CEO I have goosebumps it was incredible so yeah I want to go there too as soon as soon as all this craziness goes away um but yeah you oh my gosh I'll send you the link please do (laughs) because I you know me I love woodworking and I'm I'm learning it myself I'm not uh in any way I, I have skills because you know, my dad made space for me when I was a kid to learn from him. And I love working with my hands. And so I feel like there's so much to learn and I have all these tools and I, you know, I feel like there's always more to learn or more to teach. You know, one of my favorite things is to sit with people and, you know, teach them the the basics of even like refinishing a wood desk or again, if it's something you want to keep for a long time, there's just so much you can do when a piece is well made. Um, mm mm-hmm you can keep it for a long, long time. And, and, and that's, yeah. that's actually, you know, as much as it doesn't almost make sense for people, as I try to explain making spaces is both literally and figuratively, but like if, if a community is well-made, it might look different, but it will maintain. And that's the same thing with mm. pieces of furniture or design, or you're layering on a good foundation. And I think that's the thing with this desk that I love is that you're starting from a very, like this is a craftsman situation, but you're including the client into the design process. Yeah. yeah. I tried to think through like all of my frustrations or what somebody else would. I mean, the other component I love you talked about the foundation is it comes apart in 
four pieces. It's four pieces, eight <laughs> bolts. The front uh, legs, they the design is made so that it literally folds. Wow. So that it can be, yeah, easily moved. Move, moved into your next space. Exactly. Exactly. Or wherever it needs to go. I... You are killing it. I love it. I love all the all the thoughtfulness that you've put into it and all the research. And I think um, th- I think people start going and you've helped me a lot in this way, start looking at things and going, well, mm. that's not possible. OK, well, what is possible? What's <laughs> yeah. what's little like just telling people about the thing that you're working on and then finding out that it's like a way is made. You know, I would say God makes a way for these things. Um, and so, that's how, right. yeah, how can we make a way for all of the things that, um, and I think sometimes it's just by being curious and being willing to ask and being willing to Google. And then if you don't find the thing you were hoping for, maybe creating it. Um, so yeah, I think this is great. So I'm going to give you the last question. If you're cool with me asking, unless there's anything else you want to share about this amazing thing that's, I cannot wait to share with the world what you're doing. It's so great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I don't know. I'm just taking it day by day. I mean, figuring it out and feedback's always welcome. If anybody wants, I'm, I just, just got, oh my gosh, I need to send it to you. Updated 3D renderings oh. of the desk in a home office. Which I didn't even um, know was a thing until you taught me that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Me either. Um, I will send it to you. And yeah, any feedback. That would be my last thing, I guess, is if anybody has any other like oh. needs or like desires or eh, I'll put a picture up or... on my Instagram for sure. See if we can get some people's thoughts on it. Um, yes. I would say that you are a professional space maker. So my question for you is, what do you think is like one tangible way for people to make space, whether that be in their own home office or whether that mean in community? How can you make space for yourself or for other people? I love this question. Um, and this is relevant just because I heard this guy talk yesterday. Kirk Souter, um, works for an agency called Enzo and he's also like a business coach for purpose driven professionals, um, Mm. and like super senior execs. And he talks about this concept of preference versus purpose. And in preference, he's like, people hold on so tight to a particular preference they have because of ego or background experience or whatever, other circumstances. And they're so closed off that they can't see all the other opportunities that are possible. So Mm -hmm. I guess to me, to make space for others is let yourself see the other opportunities that are possible and really having an open mind as far as acceptance and removing any like preconceived judgments. Um, I had a friend to bring it back to her desk who was like, do you mind if I make a suggestion about a feature? And I was like, of course Mm -hmm. she's like, okay, I didn't want to offend you by like messing your design up. And I was like, no, (laughs) but it's like, you can, you can choose to be like, nope, this is it. This is all I had planned. I'm not making any iterations. It's done. Or be like, okay, cool. What do you got? Mm. Right. And just like have that conversation and understand why they're presenting that idea to you. So I re- that really stuck with me when he said that the concept of having a preference versus a purpose for something. I love that. Oh gosh. Thank you so much, Dana. And I am so excited to see where her desk is going to go. And I'm so excited for us to go and visit, uh, the nonprofit that's treating, uh, like teaching girls how to build furniture. I love that. Yes. Um, and not like, I think guys should learn too. I think everyone should learn, but I love this idea of having that be part of the Her Desk story. So thank you so much for joining me. And um, I hope I will see you soon. We are still sheltering in place, but once we are not, I cannot wait to actually see your face. Yes, me too. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for listening to this conversation. I hope that it has inspired you as much as it has inspired me to think How can we be looking for places to partner with other people and create the very thing we ourselves need? What is the big ask and are we brave enough to ask it? I'm grateful for Dana. For more about her, check out our show notes this week. And the quote was inspired by the conversation that Dana and I just had. 
So this week's inspirational quote actually reminds me of a quote that I used to see on the wall every day in my co-working space. The quote on my co-working space said, create the very thing you wish existed. But here is a similar quote from author Elizabeth Gilbert. You must write the book that you yourself would love to read. Similarly, if you are an artist, you must paint the picture you would like to see. You must write the song you would like to hear. You must build the house you would like to live in. You take nothing and you turn it into something. That's creativity. Friends, I hope that you will create the very thing that you wish already existed. Making Spaces is edited by Stephen Burnett from The Cult Podcast. The introduction music is It Can Be Done by Ari via Epidemic Sound. If you like this podcast, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google, Spotify, or wherever you listen. And leave us a review. It helps other listeners find us and let us know that we're on the right track.